So next up, uh, we have Melinda Kruger. Melinda is Executive Director of Confluence Water Technology Innovation Cluster. Confluence is a concentration of interconnected organizations that work together to promote economic growth and technological innovation in the water space in order to harness water technology innovation in Southern Ohio, Northern Kentucky, and Southeast Indiana. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad to have a chance to tell you a little bit about Confluence. So um, Confluence is, as Angela pointed out, it's a consortia. And I think most people are surprised to learn that um, Cincinnati is unique and that we have this 100 year plus history of water technology. And um, it started in 1913, actually right up by UC. They were looking for E. coli in the water. So the first lab was developed here, the first federal funding was here, and it just has continued uh, through this history for 109 years now. And um, we have developed this suite of assets that's just, uh, it's remarkable. And a lot of times if you're traveling to international uh, conferences for water, you're always surprised when you run into a PhD. So many times they came through Cincinnati or through EPA, but through Cincinnati at some, at some point. So uh, if you look at um, on our little timeline here, 2011, Cincinnati was developed and it was developed by, uh, actually it was the US EPA. And I just want to give a little shout out to Michelle Laffam. She is from the EPA and one of, they're one of our, our strongest partners and kind of how we came about. So the US EPA in around 2010 was looking around the country because they realized that we were going to have some very serious issues about water. They looked around for areas where you did have that concentration of expertise, like a Silicon Valley you know, would have in, in computer technology. And they realized that it was right here in their backyard. So we were thrilled, they pulled it together. You know, back in, in 2010, 2011, um, I became ED and we have just had this, this marvelous development of partnerships. And uh, part of it is because of this rich suite of assets we had. So first of all, if you are in this market, I mean, or in technology, you need to test that technology. And we know again, water is, is currently and will continue to be as we hear every day, and the awareness is growing daily, that is gonna be one of our biggest challenges. And Oliver touched on a lot of this as well. So we have testing facilities here. We have the testing and evaluation center at the USCBA. We have the fill stream, uh, that bottom right slide, uh, testing center out, um, out east by Harsha Lake. And we also have thousands of miles of rivers and streams. So we have all this testing capability, but what we also look for are what are our challenges. So we all remember Flint, which brought top of mind, you know, what we deal with, with lead service lines and, and providing, you know, we've got to have, you know, clean drinking water for everyone. So this really brought the attention and we are so fortunate. The US EPA has an incredible lab here. And what we did was, we brought together experts. So we put together a lead safe Cincinnati team and that includes Children's Hospital, the Cincinnati Health Department, Greater Cincinnati Waterworks, and of course you see in Confluence coordinating to, to look for solutions. We have a white paper, you know, we've kind of had to slow the process a little bit with COVID because everyone got at Children's and Health Department got very busy. But this is something that we are working on, continue to work on. And as, you know, infrastructure dollars are coming, we really have pulled together a team and are working on technologies that would address this. Uh, just a quick example would be that we're looking for a technology that, you know, would determine what is a lead service line so that you don't have to dig it up, that you would be, imagine a handheld that you would go over the ground and it would be able to tell you, is it wood, is it, you know, uh, PVC, what would that be? So we gather experts around a challenge and look for solutions in technology. Another thing that came up, this is a few years ago, I don't know if everybody remembers Toledo, and they had, uh, what, 500,000 people, no water for four days. So we pulled together an algotoxin summit that, at that point, and that was to be able to really provide a, a model that would help our utilities plan for uh, a microcystin uh, concentration contamination. So we put together a program again, it's collaboration, it's partnership. So we wound up having, uh, we worked with NASA, we worked with UC, uh, Central State, Ball State, 
or Senko, and we put together a great program that uh, we used at Harshall Lake, trying to capture, you know, in just you know one moment, uh, hyperspectral data, ground truth things, songs, and all the different technology uh, monitors, and to 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 get a picture of how we can uh, predict this. So sure enough, just a few days later, we had a 600 mile balloon coming down the Ohio River. So NASA calls, we uh, get the boat, we get the team together, and we were out and we were able to cap capture this data, uh, multi-level and you know, part of it with every was that everybody had to share. But again, every brought, everyone brought different expertise. We had Xylem who brought SAN. So this is something that, you know, it is, it is bringing everyone together, you know, the conditions, everybody share your data, and then, you know, looking for solutions to that. So we, you know, and again, as Oliver said, there, there are new uh, challenges coming every day. So what we found when we had the Alga Toxin Summit right after the uh, Toledo situation, we called everybody together to say, where were you? What did you do? What did it look like for you? And then we had all the utilities and we said, tell us you know, what you're doing. So the utilities, um, they came and they were gonna present at one o'clock and we had the Ohio EPA, the US EPA. We had some reporters there and everybody was in and they just came and said, we're really concerned about this, you know, sharing all this information and where we were, we, you know, are concerned somebody might come back and say, you, you did what? <laughs> so what happened was we put them together in a room, they presented as a group instead of individually and it was wonderful. And what they asked after they, they loved the platform. And so we created the regional utility network. So this is something that we pull the utilities together to hear directly from them, what are your challenges? And, you know, again, we're talking, this is a unique group because we're talking drinking water, wastewater, storm, reclamation. Um, so they also learn from each other, but they share data specifics, budgets, what the widget looks like, what they need. And this uh, for vendors and others is just key because they also, the, our utilities, which are incredibly forward thinking and we're so fortunate to have them, they do test, they do all this, but they're so busy. And with the challenges that we have, they're all so, so busy that having a chance and sitting down with a, someone that's got a new technology, it's, it's really a challenge for them, you know, just time-wise. So we act as kind of the gatherer, the, uh, the person, the, the unit that just kind of convenes, convenes the, the vendors and the utilities to, to identify those challenges. So that has been just a wonderful, growing uh, aspect of partnership for us. And also because we had the, the success we had with the, um, the regional utility network and what we did was we created a reverse pitch so that we had the utilities they presented instead of the vendors. And with this reverse pitch, they gave all this, you know, the very specific specifics of the problems that they had presented the vendors came. And then we had, and we have this annually, a tech showcase where all the startups and technologists, large and small businesses came together to present their solutions. And you gave away a W prize at the end of this. And we, we wound up with four winners that partnered with our utilities to test their, uh, their technologies. So that is one of the biggest thing, as we know in so many organizations, as we're talking about this, that it, it, ten, it can be very siloed. And uh, to bring together you know, all the different entities that have an effect on this and have that discussion is just you know, very important. So with the success of the Regional Utility Network, we looked at our universities and oh my goodness, well, uh, you know, obviously that's where, um, where the talent is and the future is. So we created the Water Research Consortium. So this was also to connect universities so that they would be able to know what another university would be working on as far as PFAS and solutions, remediation, and uh, what they're working on on sensors and lead sensors, let's say. So that has really been helpful. And what we did was we created um, a water research or WRC challenge. So we put together, uh, we have an innovation grant fund. And so we used that and we, you know, had a call for abstracts and had all the, the universities come together and present. So, you know, again, that has been another great way to convene, communicate, uh, and also with the universities and partnering and with the utilities, 
you know, you, there's a trust that builds. And as that conversation develops, it's really been uh, it's such a, a learning for everyone. So I just, you know, want to kind of come back and, and talk about, you know, kind of the, the vision mission of, of Confluence. But, you know, our region is a global leader in sustainable water technology and innovation. And what we look to do is to identify, develop, test, commercialize innovative technology to serve environmental challenges for sustainable economic development and job creation, which is just so huge for our utilities. Um, we look to develop, test, and commercialize technologies. We want to, because we have so many assets, attract the best and brightest students and entrepreneurs to this region. And we also are looking to promote economic development through the creation and attraction of jobs and investment. When we look at the economic impact of the technologies that we are looking to develop and bring to market, the investment, uh, I think it was even annually, it's like 2.4 billion. Um, and that is, and we, that is growing six to 8% a year. So, and that's not a recent number. So I'm sure it's even more, you know, considering the events of today. So we also want to be the source of practical and affordable solutions and sustainable practices for water in our region. With that, it's also, you know, it's, we're all talking about oil, but water, that's our liquid gold. You know, we you can't drink oil. <laughs> and we know so the amount of time and energy and crisis is happening globally in our West, you know, with water scarcity, that is not our issue. We have and look to be the models say that we're going to even be getting wetter, which will, you know, cause more of some of the other, you know, dramatic rain events and so forth. But, you know, it's just a one, I want just, I hope, I hope it's a point of pride for everybody that we have this incredible intellectual capacity in this market and uh, just such an opportunity right here. So I'll wrap up, up with that. 